All right, everybody, what character has been in more movies than James Bond, Luke Skywalker, and Rocky Balboa combined? Wait, is that accurate? That's right, the big green meanie himself. Let's do it. All right, everybody, before we go any further, you know the routine. We're going to take it to the trailer for 1971's Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster, or as you might say, Gogeta vs. Hidora. Hit it. Out of the polluted waters it came to become the most fearful menace that ever threatened mankind. <sighs> Feeding, growing ever more deadly on smog, only one force dared stand up to its overpowering evil. Godzilla! Godzilla versus the Smog Monster. Will Godzilla, man's friend, be vanquished? More than 1,600 dead have been reported, while other casualties are expected to exceed 30,000. storage tank of the Japan Oil Company has exploded. Nothing man can do can stop the smog monster. Can Godzilla save the Earth from this mastodon of destruction? Okay, everybody, this motion picture was directed by Yoshimitsu Bano. He really didn't direct much other than this motion picture. He, uh, he was the second unit director on a lot of things, and he wrote a couple of things, but it was just this and the movie called The, the Birth of Japanese Islands. That's really all he did. So I don't know why he never got more work. This movie, uh, I don't know, it should have been a hell of a calling card. Next. Okay, everybody, let's get down to brass taxes. The two main stars of this motion picture are Godzilla and the Smog Monster. And the two men who played them have had a long career with the Godzilla franchise. Playing Godzilla was Haru Nakajima. He played Godzilla in tons and tons and tons of the early motion pictures. I mean, he was in uh, Godzilla vs. King Kong. And I mean, he, he was like all, not all, but m almost all the original Godzilla motion pictures that you might know and love. He was also in a movie called... Uh, were the gargantuans he played one of them either way he had a really long career playing godzilla and, and it, basically if you name it he was godzilla in all those early flicks okay playing hedora was ken pachito satsuma satsuma he played uh gigan in uh in uh the uh movies where you seen gigan pop up versus megalon all that kind of stuff but his real claim came when much later in the franchise in the 90s and the late 80s and 90s when Godzilla popped back up and they were redoing all the series and you seen Mothra and all these guys popping back up again. He played Godzilla in those motion pictures. So these two guys that you see in those two suits have connections to Godzilla that range over like four decades. It's an amazing, an amazing thing just to see that you got the two guys in there that probably lived in those suits more than anybody. So it's, it's kind of a fun fact. Okay, this motion picture starts out, there's a lot of music, and it's got a really weird vibe to it. It shows a lot of the pollution in the world. It shows, uh, or basically, pollution around Japan. And you see this, like, woman, and she's singing about saving the earth, and you see this pollution and all this crap floating in the oceans and all this other kind of stuff. That's the opening credits type stuff, you know what I mean? And then it goes into, you see a young man, I don't know, he's a kid, whatever, and he's playing in his backyard, and he's got the strange collection of toys I've ever seen in my life, because all his toys are like Godzilla and Gigan and half the guys that have stomped Japan into the dirt over and over and over and over and over again. I mean, I get it, by now Godzilla was supposed to be a good guy and all that kind of stuff, but it's still kind of odd that... He's playing with Godzilla toys and King Kidora toys and all this other kind of stuff when these guys have stomped Japan and killed millions and millions of people over and over again. I mean, it's like, it just doesn't make any sense. I don't know how to put it other than that. It's just weird. It's just weird. Along comes a local fisherman, and the local fisherman says, Listen, I found this gigantic tadpole. This is kind of odd. He brings it to 
little Ken Yano's father. That's, that's the boy's name, in case I forgot to mention it. The father happens to be a scientist. And the scientist's father, he's looking at this thing like, oh, this is kind of weird. Hmm, there's even a big tadpole. I don't know what's going on with this thing. But it kind of sets aside. Next thing you know, they're all eating dinner. While they're eating dinner, what do you see? This giant monster is terrorizing around Japan. They don't know what it is. They don't know who he is. He's just popping up underneath ships, and he's breaking them in half and drinking all the oil, as one would do. Still, nobody's really sure about this. They just know that he happens to live by the sea. So Ken, little Ken, and his dad say, hey, let's just go to the ocean and dive the hell in, see what we can find. I, man, I don't know. They go down to the ocean, they go in there, the, before you know it, the little boy's playing around on the seashore, completely inappropriately dressed for being by the ocean, by the way. And he's got a sweater on and overall, I don't, I don't know. And then the father goes into the water. All of a sudden, the boy sees Hidora. Hidora comes out and he lies overhead. And so he's so close, the little boy sticks it with his knife and cuts it all the way in, down the belly all the way. And then Hidora lands on the other side of him, swims off, comes back, screws with dad underneath the water and somehow scars up his face. I, I, I... <sighs> is this all necessary? The young man starts dreaming. He starts dreaming that Godzilla is going to come and he's going to save King. He's going to save Japan from this horrible smog monster. Then lo and behold, he shows up and starts saving Japan from this horrible smog monster. You see, the smog monster has this thing for sludge and gook and grime and dirt and all this other kind of stuff. And he basically goes around breaking up his ships and drinking the shit out of it. And then he goes and he comes up on land and like a stoned out kid in his basement or something like that just starts off all the, all the, uh, the, off all the uh, smokestacks of sludge and junk in the country that's spewing out toxic waste. He's going over there and like some kid that can't stop playing Fallout and living in his mother's basement with a bunch of Cheetos, he's just... A Godzilla shows up, kicks the living shit out of this guy, breaks him apart, throws him around, but we find out that the smog monster is going to continually keep growing to the point where he gets bigger and badder and stronger than Godzilla. And that's when the real fights happen in this son of a bitch. That's when the movie gets rolling. Okay, Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster is really just a weird movie. Okay, I don't even know if I'm going to go much more into this story. You basically get the idea. You know what I mean? Big Monster shows up. He's kicking the crap out of Japan by breaking up on all the ships and sucking on all their garbage. Godzilla shows up, fights it. That's the whole story. I mean... Okay, among some purists, this motion picture might not be the one that they really relate to the most. You know what I mean? But I remember it as the sister-brother team. And that's what I used to call Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster and Godzilla vs. Megalon. Probably because they both have the same little boy starring in the same movie, even though I think he's playing different characters in each one. But he's like the same unifying factor. This movie isn't as corny as some of those other Godzilla movies that you've seen, where, like, you know, there's baby Godzilla and he's blowing puffs of bringing ring smoke and shit, and it just looks stupid, and you're like, what the, what are they thinking? And it's not as cool as, like, Destroy All Monsters, or, you know, King Kong vs. Godzilla, or some of the earlier stuff like that. It just takes this weird niche where Godzilla's become, like, a good guy, friendly to Japan type of good monster, and he winds up protecting Japan from said monsters from the, from the baddie land, I don't know what the hell you want to call them, and monsters like Megalon. Monsters like King Ghidorah, monsters like uh, uh, Gigan, monsters like the Smog Monster. And he becomes the defender of Earth. He's become more friendly, his eyes are bigger, he almost has a smile, he starts doing hand gestures. In one movie, he actually, he actually speaks, and I'm, I don't, I'm not even joking. But there's an undeniable charm and love in this motion picture. You sit there and you watch it, and it's just so bizarre. There's parts of this motion picture that go from being a straight movie to be in a cartoon, and I mean animated cartoon. You see the smog monster, and he's drinking ships, and he's, he's doing all the shit that you've seen him kind of do before in, in actual film, but now he's just doing them in cartoons, and you don't understand why. It's just breaking back and forth. There's weird scenes in this movie where they, they're going to disco tax, and it's way, way, way bizarre. It's one of those motion pictures, like back in the day, people used to say, if you like Pink Floyd the Wall, or whoever made Pink Floyd the Wall had to be doing drugs, who has ever watched this motion picture seriously had to be doing drugs. It was a really 60s vibe to this motion picture. You know, all the town people thought, or the young town people thought, that the only way that they could really help destroy the smog monster is to go have a party in the park, light a bonfire, make music, as one does when your country's being terrorized by a giant piece of sludge. There's, there's loopholes in this motion picture where 
you see things where you're like, well, if every part, much like John Carpenter's The Thing, or much like uh, The Blob, every part of this monster is a living individual creature. If you break off a part of the smog monster, it'll kind of just slither away and can rejoin another part of it and grow bigger, bigger, bigger. And Godzilla's beating the shit out of this guy, and there's parts of him flying all over Tokyo, and you're like, wouldn't there just be 10,000 smog monsters by now? Wouldn't all hope be lost? I mean, wouldn't... I don't understand. He's been flinging parts of this dude all over town. He's got... There's, there's like 20,000 of this guy. Or why wouldn't this guy just multiply himself, just split in half, both grow big and kick the shit out of Godzilla? It's a Godzilla movie. You can't hope for anything that has anything like a meaningful plot. You can't think that it's going to be well thought out. It's just big monster versus big monster, and a lot of shit gets broken. And by the way, this motion picture has possibly more violence in it for a kid Godzilla movie than any of the other Godzilla movies. I mean, in the original one, you would see a couple people stepped on. And then after that, all the violence was just implied. Buildings got broken, shit got destroyed. Godzilla threw King Kong through a building. Before you know it, Rodan flew down, a building blew up. In this motion picture, you actually see people disintegrating in the streets and becoming skeletons with liquefied flesh around them. And you're like, what the hell is going on here? This is pretty hardcore for a Godzilla movie, especially for a kid's Godzilla movie. But strangely enough, even though I was a kid when I seen it, I wasn't freaked out or traumatized by it. And it was one of those motion pictures that became one of my endearing Godzilla movies. As again, as I said, Godzilla vs. Megalon, Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster, two motion pictures I've probably seen 10,000 times on WSBK out of Boston or WPYX out of New York or any WWOR out of Manhattan or wherever the hell that thing was from. They used to run these things all the time. And I loved every second of it. There is one thing that happens in this motion picture, though, which is probably the greatest sin ever created in a Godzilla movie ever. And I mean ever. I don't know what they were doing. I don't know what they were thinking. And then usually what I do on this channel is I show you the trailer and I, I show still photographs as I go through stuff. Because I think it's more fun. I don't want to show too much of the movie. I don't want to give too much away. I don't want to ruin too much of this thing for you. That's why I try to keep it kind of sparse and a little bit necked back. But there was a scene in this motion picture that if I showed you a picture of it, it's not going to do justice. I have to show you a clip. Hmm. Perhaps only rivaled with pain in my heart by Princess Leia herself flying. Anyway, people, go check out Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster. It's good, it's fun, it's entertaining. The fights are cool. The effects are pretty decent for a Godzilla flick. There's crazy music in it. There's acid trips. There's cartoons. There's all kinds of shit being thrown into this pot, and they stirred it up, and they hoped it all stuck to the wall, and strangely enough, it did. Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster. Live it, learn it, love it. Have a good time. Gotta go. Sorry, this is a short one. Peace.